Hi, everybody. Hi. This is a alchemy, and I'm Rick Barrett. We, tonight, we want to talk about uh, holding poles in opposition, creating energy by holding poles in opposition. And we want to continue with the discussion of, of the myth of shifting weight. And we're going to go a little bit farther with that and see how we can incorporate that into, uh, into a couple of different movements. So the, uh, let's talk about the uh, holding poles in opposition first. So the idea is that energy is generated by holding poles in opposition. And what does that mean? That means that you consciously are saying, this is not that. And you say, oh, but they're both here together. And then you have the intention of, at, at, at the grossest level, you can say, I'm going to push my hands together. And when I do that, I push my hands together without moving my hands. And I want to feel what's going on between the hands. So at the, uh, most people are going to be able to feel something there. If, you, if you're not, then you stand up. You feel the balls of your feet, you set your knees, feel the weight over the balls of the feet, and set the knees, bring your hands up, like that, and then do it that way. So you're feeling, feeling the field between your hands. It's kind of like pushing two magnets together, where you have the similar poles of the magnets. And, or you can pull the hands apart without moving them. So the idea is the intention is there. You're activating the body's uh, readiness potential, but without activating the actual motor response, without actually activating the muscles. And so you create poles in opposition. Then we can change that to, let's say, this hand up and this hand down. So your one hand is up and the other one is reaching up. The other one is reaching down. And now we have these two poles in opposition. It creates an energy flow between the two hands. Then we feel that and we feel the, the, the ball of, of, the, of the foot. We reach up with the crown point of the head. We have those poles in opposition. Now, as we... When we activate all of those at the same time, we have to expand our awareness into a super conscious state in order to make that work, which is fine because that's where all good Tai Chi happens. So not only does it create a super conscious state, but also it, uh, you, create a, you go into super consciousness to get there. So in other words, but just by feeling both hands, feeling the, the top of your head, feeling the, the floor and activating, then you create this energy. You create a whole body energetic connection. And we'll step back and we're going to bring the other uh, hands up. Feel the other ball of the foot. Reach with the, the knee one, the crown point. Reach with your hands, both directions, and feel, your, feel the activation in your hands and uh, and throughout your body. You can feel, the hands are the best barometer. They'll, you'll feel a tingling, pulsing, a sense of fullness, some um, circulation improvement just by doing that. So these are, those are what Stan was asking, like, okay, that's on a static level, okay? We're, we're not moving there, we're just, we're doing it. What happens if you want to move and create, create energy flow then? And that's where it gets a little more interesting. So let's say at a very simple level, uh, what you say, the, the, we're, we step forward and we reach with the right hand, but we pull down with the left and just feel those two. It's easier to feel it whenever you slow down because you're not getting the motor functions uh, kind of confusing your brain. But then you push down with the right hand and reach out with the left and feel that. So now you're 
pulling apart. So your your master uh, Chen used to call this palm dancing, where you have you have the two palms where where moving in relation to each other. But when you do that, you create a whole body energetic connection. And you can step back and reach as long as you feel the opposition of the hands, you're going to get that energy flow. And then by getting it first when you're in a static posture, just holding that, let's say, let's say just just like like this, you've got in, in a ward off left, you have you have your left arm reaching forward and your right hand pulling down. Okay, you have that. So you you get that in a static posture first, and then and then you continue that. So then we're gonna move here and ah, oh, we feel these two poles here. So the real short answer is poles in opposition, you're holding two points and you are creating energy flow. You're creating energy flow by your intention to oppose them. Without the intention, if I just hold my hands here like this, there is no pole in opposition because I haven't decided to do it yet. This is, a, this is not something we just kind of fall into. This is an intentional thing. This requires your E, your higher mind, to clear and be able to direct an intention in a way that allows you to access higher states of awareness and body, mind, spirit integration. Any uh, questions on that? Did that work for you, Stan? You're on mute. You're on mute, Stan. You're on mute. <laughs> Can you unmute him? Uh, no, I okay. Ask him All right. Anybody else? Uh, any other questions or thoughts on that? Good. Everybody good. Everybody good on that. Great. Okay. So moving on. The um, next thing I'd like to do is to review what we're talking about with the uh, the myth of shifting weight. So to review, if I uh, tell a beginning student, how do you, uh, how do you shift your weight? You know, say shift your weight into your, into your right leg. So he'll go like this, you know, shift into the left leg, be like this, you know, go forward or back. It's like, you know, there's, there's this, right? You, this kind of thing. That's the way most people will interpret the idea of shifting weight. That idea is like very, deep into our our programming so if you use that term you're probably going to get that result so if you want a different term we have to we have to think in a different way and the best way i found is just by actually describing what you're doing which is thinking but in terms of you're changing the substantiality by changing what you consider to be the the load bearing part of your body and that's not the limit of substantiality and insubstantiality but it's a very gross way of saying it. So if I'm, you know, if I want to get into my right leg, I feel the ball of my right foot, I set my right knee, and I use my quad to spiral down so that I now have about 90% of my, my right leg without, without my butt going, my butt is not going to the side at all, right? It's just spiraling down, boom. So there's a, I'm, and I'm also not rocking backwards. So if I'm doing it like this, I feel the ball set the knee. What I'm not doing is I'm not rocking back like that, right? I am keeping my weight over the ball of the foot. I spiral down like that, okay? So everybody just, just try that with me and we'll kind of review this. So feel the uh, ball of the right foot, set the right knee and spiral down to the right. Good, now feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right and turn to the left. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, turn to the right. Okay, notice how the body is just rotating in place, it's not rocking side to side because if you rock side to side, 100% of the time, you are going to uproot yourself. 
you're going to you're going to kink the hose and you're going to pull away from the earth. That's not a, if we want to get we have that whole body energetic connection. We want to feel rooted. It's ah, oh, you spiral down and turn. You spiral down and turn. Okay, like that. Now, if we take it and move to the to a uh, a bow stance, put your left foot forward. You put like seventy percent of your weight in your in your left foot. You want to shift it. You want to not shift it, but but you want to make the right leg substantial. You feel the ball of the right foot. You set the right knee, and here this time we're going to spiral down to the left so that we load up the right leg. Okay, the weight is still over the ball of the foot, and then I turn to my right. Okay, now I'm going to feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee over the ball, and spiral down to the right and turn to the left. This time I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to feel the ball of my right foot, set my right knee, and this time I'm going to spiral down to the right and turn to the left. And now I'm going to feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the left, and turn to the right. So each of those, each of those things, doing it face, facing you, it's so I'm, uh, my weight to my left leg, and I feel the ball of the right, Set the right knee, I'm going to spiral down to the, at the time I'm going to spiral down to the left. So what I've done is I've turned to the left, my body's turned to the left, my knee is still pointing that way. And then I turn back to center. Now I'm going to feel the ball of my left foot, set my left knee, and this time I'm going to spiral down to the right, load up my right, okay, my, or my left leg, by spiraling down to the right, I'm starting to load up my left leg and then I turn back to center. And now I have my left leg is a substantial one. Everybody got that? Is that uh, that clear? All cool? Yeah, we got we got a question here, Richard. Um, <clears throat> hey, when? Well, actually, when you're in a, a regular stance or both stance, when you're spiraling down. If you're in a bow stance, you're, you've um, set your front foot, set your front knee, and you're spiraling down either to the left or the right. Is your intention to, does the spiraling down bring your weight toward that leg? Uh, so if, you're, if your weight is in your front leg and you yes. spiral down in your front leg, you're just releasing the quad there and you're turning. Exactly. And that, that's, that's great for keeping your weight in your front leg substantial. Got, got that. Okay, if you want to shift, you want to change your substantiality yes. so that it's in your back leg, yes. then, the, then the turn is you immediately, so my, my, my left leg is substantial. I want to go into my, my right leg, so, the first thing I do is I feel the ball of my right foot. So not, not my left foot. I feel the ball of my right foot. I set my right knee, and then I can spiral down either to the right or to the left, depending on which way I'm turning. So I spiral down. This time I'll spiral down to the right. Okay, so now I am substantial, in, and I turn back to center. So I'm, my, I'm right leg substantial now. I want to go back to my front leg. I'm going to feel the ball of my left foot, my front foot, and this time I'm going to spiral down to the left and turn back to center. It's the spiraling that substantiates the leg. The spiraling activates the quad, like it uh, it enables the quad to become neutral, and that allows you. To settle into that that leg. Okay, um, I'm still. It's, it's I'm in a bow stance. You're in a bow stance. My front leg is substantial. Yes. I want to change to my back leg being substantial. Yes. So setting my back leg and spiraling either way will bring substantiality to that leg. Yes. Okay. So it's actually, we don't want to talk about shifting weight. That's where we're trying to get away from. 
That's right. But I'm moving substantiality from front to back by spiraling into the back leg now or spiraling into the front leg to bring substantiality back to the front. Exactly. Okay. And spiraling either way is okay. I mean, spiraling either way is okay. Does. Depending on, depending on which way you're turning in the, in a, in a, in a type which, form. Which way you're going to turn next. Right. That's right. Yeah, so I got it. Let's say in a, in, in, in William Chen's form, if I'm uh, if I'm starting here and I, I know that I want to turn to my right. So I'm going to feel the ball of my left foot, spiral down to the left and then turn to the right. Yeah, so got my, it. My left leg is substantial. Now I want to make my right leg substantial. I'm going to feel the ball of my right foot, push my right knee forward to set that over the ball of the foot. And here I'm going to spiral down to the right. Okay, so I'm loading up here and that enables me to pick up my left foot and move that forward because okay. my weight is my, my, my substantiality is my right leg. Now I'm going to feel, I want to move to a, I want to turn to my left as I, as I go into the, uh, the front leg. So I'm going to feel the ball of the left foot, push my left knee forward and spiral down to the right. So I'm releasing the quad, my left quad, spiraling down to the right. And that loads that up. My left leg is now substantial, which then enables me to complete the posture. Right. Okay. So, so we're going, depending on which way I'm turning, I want to, I want to spiral the opposite direction to right. be able to load up the leg before the turn. Got so the big, you, okay. So uh, just to clarify for everybody else who might be watching, the big problem that people get into, they say, oh, I want to turn, I want to turn to my right. So then they, they, they just turn to the right. I want to turn to my left. So they turn to their left. And if the quad has not released, if there's, you don't have some quad, then you're completely, you're floating. You're, you're rootless as you, as you move. And most Taiji that I've observed kind of falls into that, you know, at least 70, 80% of, of Taiji Chuan that I've, I've observed falls into that. And that's, you know, you can get away with it because Taiji Chuan is, is so good that it will, even if you don't activate the full uh, paint box of colors that, that we have, you can still have a, a whole lot of fun with it and it'll do a whole, a whole lot of good. But if you want that next bit where you are feeling the continuity of energy throughout the whole form, you're just like, you've, you're feeling, feeling the juju, then you need to be plugged into the big, the big chi to make that happen. And that and you want to keep that a continuous thing. We do that by using the qua, sung qua, in order to be able to, to maintain our connection while shifting our substantiality. Okay. Thank, thank you. That, I, I think that was just what I was looking for. Uh, Great. Thank you for that question. I think it's an important question and it can't be asked often enough because it's one of those things that it, it took me years to develop this awareness and uh, it will take people time and practice in order to be able to get it from here down to here. It's, and so to repeat it over and over again is, I think, a great thing. Do you have something? This is, this is great for moving, moving from thinking about shifting weight to changing substantiality. That's, uh, that, that's, that's a paradigm shift important. right there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, until you do, you're, you're always going to cue in the weight shift, what we do to shift our weight, the thing we've been doing our whole lives, which is going to trap you in, inside a fixed relationship with your body. And this is, to break out of it, you need new words. You got something, Nora? So how does um, walking, does this do the same, does the same principles apply when you walk? Uh, it can. It does for me. Uh, it's a, uh, depending on how much you want to make your, your, your walking into a Tai Chi thing. But it's it definitely, you know, it's, it's once you develop an awareness of your qua and, and of substantiality and insubstantiality, once you be able to make that distinction between the two, then you can feel it every, every minute of the day. Mm. So it's a, uh, but 
um, you got to slow down. Since walking is another one of those things that, hey, I know how to walk. I've been doing it since I've been a year old, you know. So uh, get off my back. You know, it's uh, <laughs> it's a uh, it's one of those old patterns that that people don't want to challenge. You know, kind of like breathing. It's like, yeah, I know how to breathe. What do you tell me how to breathe for? So the we want to get it so that that there's oh there, there's an advantage to doing this in order to retool anything you need incentive you need it needs energy and effort and intention in order to do that and you have to there has to be a sufficient payout in terms of your felt experience in order to make it worth putting in the effort dude there's one way to practice it while walking is to practice. come over and talk one way to do it while walking is if you're in unfamiliar territory, like you don't know what the surface is, then you practice empty step. You put your foot out and you feel the ground before you put any weight on it. It's very good to do in like an icy winter or something. You know, you see a patch that might be ice. So you want to practice your empty step. So you put the foot down, but you don't put any weight in on it until you can feel whether the ground is is, uh, you know, rocky, smooth, you know, feel the ground. So you meet the ground first, then you feel the ball of your foot. And then you can put your knee and you know the ground is there so you can step into it. And then you take your other foot and feel the ground. It's there, step into it. And, and the, you could do this as a a slow exercise on unfamiliar ground. <laughs> you know, don't do it in your general walking to the store. Um, but that's a way of practicing this while walking. Empty step, feel the ball of the foot, set the knee. I wanted to make the point about setting the knee earlier. It's like uh, if you shift your weight when your knee is not set, that's a good way to kill your knee. Right. Uh, if you want to make your leg substantial, make sure the knee is there like a post. So the knee is straight over the ball of the foot. And uh, that way you won't hurt your knee. You won't put any weight into it until it's in the right position. Do you want to illustrate that? I think that you should illustrate that. I should, okay. and, uh, one other question on that is the quad. thinking here, because the, uh, how we get that so let's say my weight is my my rear leg. I want to go to my my front leg. What I don't do is I, I don't feel the ball of my foot and then shift my weight to set my knee. I feel the ball of my foot, push my knee forward a little bit while my my right leg is still substantial. Okay, so I'm back here and then I just pop it out there so that I establish the position, but I haven't done it. If I'm walking, I do that. I step forward and I feel it before I activate that. This is, I'm doing it really slow motion and most of us won't have patience to do that while we're uh, running to catch, catch a, uh, a bus, but the, uh, the feel the ball, you push the knee forward or float the knee out just so you get, it. it's there. There's no load in that leg. There's no load in my front leg yet. It's not substantial, it's just the, I've just begun the process of negotiating substantiality with my left leg. So now, oh, now here, so in order to uh, make it substantial, that's where the, the quad gets activated and then I go. So the, uh, the, the key is to be able to, to put it out there in a way that is very, you gently float it out without putting any weight into it at all. Dennis. Yeah, getting back to what Richard was saying, I've heard it said that in Tai Chi, you turn left before you turn right, and vice versa. Is that is that what you're getting to, where you swivel left before right and vice versa? It's not exactly that, but it's uh, it's getting close. So, to illustrate, <laughs> to illustrate, if I Let's say I want to, I want to, I want to uh, turn to my left, right? So I, it's not just swiveling, 
right? It's not just turning. It's there's a spiraling that occurs. It's like er, you're screwing down into the earth. And that releases. You're going down. You're not just holding your claw set and just rotating. There is a er, spiraling down and then a turn, which then enables you to access the power. Does that make sense, Dennis? Yeah, it's sort of like wine in a spring. Yeah, Richard. You're 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 on mute. You're muted. Richard, you're muted. There you go. Thank you. Um, maybe I'm getting a week or so ahead, but it seems as though practicing this in what would normally be our wings. Uh -huh is going to be a really great way to try to practice this. Uh, right. And that's what I've tried to do with the, uh, with the opening exercise of the, of the uh, Reclaiming Lost Territory. Yeah. So, and, and even if you just do the, the, that exercise, you know, some people call it the bear exercise, you know, even if you're doing it like, like this, where you're just rocking back and forth like that, right, you're just turning, there's no energetic connection, but that's going to do you some good. That's just going to, oh, okay, you're going to loosen up here. You know, you're going to, oh, you're, and, and that's fine. But if you do that exercise and you feel the ball set the knee and spiral down, and you feel the ball set the knee and turn, and you do it slow motion for a while, you know, that's why I like to do it with the, uh, with the uh, back heel raise. I like to do it forward to back so that I can, I'm 100% in my right leg, say, and I'm spiraling down and turning and doing this, right? So it's happening from the claw, right? So it's not a rocking back and forth. So, and then as you, as you get acclimated to that, then you can, you can do it going back and forth, but you're using your claw to make that, to make that happen. So it's a great exercise, but you want to do it slow at first and isolate the uh, the the claw action first in order to, before you uh, speed it up. That makes sense. Great. Anybody else? Okay. Good. Okay. So moving forward. Um, what I'd like to do now is, um, let me get, get some time. I would like to introduce um, this idea, but we're going to add uh, a, um, a very simple Tai Chi posture. And there are lots of ways to do this posture. It's called uh, white, cane, white Crane Spreads Wing. And uh, lots of ways to do it, but we're going to simplify it for, uh, for this. So, uh, so white crane spread wing is, is usually done like, like this. In Master Chen's form, it's, it's, it's uh, like you're, you're coming up like this and boom. So it's, uh, there's, uh, but the uh, way we're going to do it today is uh, start with your feet, uh, heels together. Everybody just stand up. Feet, heels together, toes apart. Good. And then feel the ball of your right foot. Move your right knee so it's set over the ball of the foot. No weight in it yet. But now you're activating the substantiality of the right leg. And you're going to spiral down to the left. So you're releasing down, spiraling down to the left. Now we're getting more substantiality. We're getting about 70% of the weight in the right leg. And then we turn to the right. Good. So now we have about 90%. You pick up the heel, that's 95%. And then you step out. So you're back to about 90% in the right leg. And then you feel, feel the ball of the left foot. You set the left knee, spiral down to the right. So you're starting to load up the left leg now. And then you turn back to center. So the weight is now 50-50. And then bow forward slightly. And then bring your hands up. And bring them down, okay? 
for you to bring your elbows, your wrists. And elbows out a little bit. Reach with your fingers and feel the chi in your hands. So we've got, we already have a whole body energetic connection. Reach with your knee one point, feel the balls of your feet. Feel the load there on the balls of your feet. So now we're gonna do something very simple. I just wanna focus on the right arm now. And what the right arm is going to do is you're going to, is going to turn palm up and reach back with your elbow. So you're, and keep the, notice that I'm not coming out to the side. I'm keeping a very narrow path as I come here and bring my arm back, okay? And here, what I don't want to do is bring it back like that so that I'm feeling a kink in the hose in the shoulder. I want to, as I'm coming back, notice that my arm only goes as far as my quad will let me. So a side view, notice that I still have a kind of a bow shape here in the arm. It's not like this. So just everybody do that. Just, just bring your arm out like in front and then bring it very slowly back, 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 back. Bring it, bring it, bring it. And notice at what point the tension kicks in. You start to notice the kink in the hose. For me, it's right about here. I go past that and I start to start to feel the tension there. There's a break there in the shoulder joint. So as we're coming back, reach with your elbow. Da, 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 da. And here you only go as far as your quad will let you. Okay, so we're here like this. So now we're going to do this on a, going down the uh, reach with the elbow. Get down to about here, you reach with the wrist. You're, notice that I'm spiraling down into my right claw and arm comes up to here, okay? Notice that this is, at this angle, there's no tension in my shoulder. If I pick it up a little bit farther, I start to feel tension there, which means I'm kinking the hose. That means that the chi is getting blocked. So what I wanna do is I wanna come up here and Ah, I want to feel that connection. That not somebody else may be able to bring it up to here, and you know I can do that. Certainly, I can do it all up. But in terms of, of where the energy gets kinked, I reduce my energy flow and my effective power if I go past you know about forty-five degrees or so. If I go up any farther, then there's a kink in the hose. So I want to keep it here. So the idea is. Feel the ball, set the knee, spiral down to the right, elbow, wrist, and ah, back to here. And then feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, and turn without bobbing up. You turn and bring your hand up. So you're, bring your arm, uh, set the elbow and bring the hand up like that, okay? Doing it facing you. I'm like this, I go spiral down to the right, okay, like this, and then I turn like this. Okay, so the hand, hand comes up, boom, and you can bring it up even, even higher, but for right now, just, just boom. So there's a, you set the elbow and then you, you bring it up. Okay, and then you go to the left side and left hand comes down, ball, Knee spiral down to the left, left elbow, left wrist. You come up to here, good. And then you turn back and here you are. Okay, so that's, that's what's happening with the right hand. So we go, or to the, to, to uh, the uh, actually the hand to both hands. So the, the one, you come in like this, boom, like that. And then the other hand goes boom, and back here like this. So we're going to have the the yin or the uh, insubstantial hand. So this is the the substantial hand. So it goes like that, 
and the other hand comes across like this. So reach out as you turn. So you get to this point here. Good. And then you turn back and bring your, your left foot forward. Your right hand comes up, your left foot comes forward, and you're here. And, and so now we have this idea of, of opposing poles. What do we have? We have the left hand pulling down, the right hand reaching up. We have opposing poles. Okay, step back with the left foot and your right hand comes down to the left ball, set the left knee, turn to the left, right hand comes down, left hand comes back, and then turn and boom. Right foot forward, comes forward, right hand comes down, left hand comes up, white crane. Step back, turn. So right ball, spiral down to the right, Right hand comes back, left hand comes down. So you're here, you turn back, and left foot comes sweeping across. Step back, left ball, knee claw, spiral down to the left. Turn. <coughs> Step back, right ball, knee claw, spiral down to the right. Back. Step back. Step back. Okay. And then Bring your hands down, good, and step in, and finish. Good. Any questions on that? Anybody? Did that, did that go okay? Did everybody was able to, to, to grab that? Anybody have trouble? You have your your hands are up there, Rick. What the, what words are you saying here? You want more? Oh, okay, you're good. Okay. Um, good. Uh, so that that's that's a very simple one. And you can you can do it so that you know you're just it becomes a, a nice little meditation. So here I am. Boom. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I want to to emphasize here is when I'm coming up here like this, that I am setting my elbows. So this is what this is what drives the move. So maybe uh, Maria, you want to give me a hand with this? Okay. So can you uh, can you do that uh, that kind of kind of thing? So you're just you're going boom like that, right? And 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 that's it. Or maybe maybe I'll uh, maybe you'll do it to me just to test you. Out. So the idea here is this: that I'm coming down here like this, right? And if I'm bringing this from the shoulder, I got nothing. That's more than enough force to be able to to stop this. So I come down like this, right? And I'm coming from my shoulder and. If my hose is kinked here at all, forget it. But if I come down like this, boom, and I set my elbow, let's bring that back to here. So, so, so I set my elbow here, 
like that, and then I activate this, it, it's uh, you're able to generate gin. Do that again. So boom, <laughs> like that, boom. And when I'm here like this, I set the elbows, boom, like this. And so that as I turn, slow motion here, boom, it, it really, it, there, there's, there's no game. There's, it's, it's, it's night and day. If I'm doing it from the shoulder, I don't set my elbows, and I try to do that, <laughs> I can't, I'll just tear my shoulder up if I try to, to overcome that, that amount of, of, of force. So the, so the key here is you're reaching with the elbow, right? You're setting the elbow like this, and then, boom, you're activating, you're activating that, and the power that comes from that is, uh, Quite impressive, quite quite powerful, quite uh, magical almost. It, it's like, where did that come from? So the key, when I talk about coming back here like this, setting the elbow, and then activating. What about that hand? Same thing with this hand. The 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 yin hand is so. If if I'm coming and I'm activating here, right this. The yin hand, the insubstantial hand, so you, you're, you, <laughs> <laughs> come up here. So the insubstantial hand here is if you want to, if you want to use this to pull using the, using the elbow enables you to generate a tremendous amount of torque from that. <laughs> you want to try? Want to throw me <laughs> Let's go back here. Let's go back and see if the uh, if, if there's any questions here. Yeah, throw me around later. Yeah, throw me around later. That's right. <laughs> we didn't have a chance to rehearse that routine, so so I got to do the I got to do the throwing this week. <laughs> um, any questions on that? Is that uh, that uh, makes sense, right? So we get we create that. So if you know if I'm like this and my shoulder is kinked. I got nothing, right? And you can feel it. Just bring your bring your arm back like that, and and just try to just feel what you have. You you can use your other hand to press against it, and just notice it's yeah, <laughs> you got nothing. But you bring the shoulder, bring the arm, the elbow forward, so that it's coming out just ahead of the shoulder. You can feel it. There's a point here. This is the way you're then. Then you you can feel the difference there in the in the, the ability to generate gin from from that from that position. So the the chi flows much better, and you're you got you got the mojo. Okay, any questions on that? We're good. Okay, good. Um, so let's just. Uh, on your feet again. <clears throat> so very simple thing to do. So we're going to just do the, the ball knee claw thing. Feel the ball. Um, so your weight is in your left leg. Your both hands, your, your left leg is forward. You feel the ball of your right foot, set the right knee. And this time, as you spiral down to the right, just Turn and lead with your elbow. And that doesn't, when I say lead with your elbow, that doesn't mean you pull your elbow back like that. It means that as your, your intention is in your elbow, as you turn back, right? So you you can bring your hand like that down as you come back. And just feel, just stop in that position and feel into your hands. Reach out with your left elbow also and feel the power of that circuit. Okay, so just come back and just turn and spiral down and reach with the elbow and then reach with the wrist. Boom, so now you have, you have your arm is in a bow shape. It's not like that, it's in a bow shape and you, you have this, this mighty force there that is uh, that comes just from doing that. It also 
there's an elegance to it if you have done correctly. So if you're here like this and you're coming down elbow and wrists and fingers, poof, it creates a, uh, a courtly kind of grace to it. So you're here like this. So you don't have to uh, use any kind of muscular tension to generate effective power. Okay. So then you set the elbow and you turn. Right? So, oh, boom. You set the elbow and you turn. Your, your elbow, you, when I say set it, that means it has a, a position there. If I'm moving my elbow in relation to my body, then the pivot point goes back to the shoulder and it's going to be more difficult to generate an effective chin from that. If I'm coming like this, then I'm more, more difficult. But if I set my elbow, boom, like this, and I, I then move my, my, my hand from, from that position, then I have a, a lot more effective power in that. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm giving you pieces to take apart whatever forms you're doing. Not, I, I realize that not everybody watching this video does the same, every, not everybody does the same forms. You know, uh, of, of the people present, uh, how many people do a Taiji form of one form or another? Everybody, okay, yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, so the, um, uh, there are some people who don't, but it doesn't matter if there's a, if uh, you use these principles, you can create uh, chi flow and jin, no matter what it is you're doing. And what that does is then enables you to have this effective power that allows you to get things done with a minimum of effort and it a minimum of of injury and wear and tear on the joints as you're doing it. Can you make that point about wholeness? Wholeness. Uh, what was that one? That, well, you know, if you're, we're talking a lot about pieces, Rick is showing a piece of this, a piece of that. You know, we're working on the knee or the or the sung kwa or whatever. But when you put it all together, when you get coherent. You feel the balls of your feet, you get aligned, you feel your elbows, and then all of a sudden, more and more and more of your body becomes... Why don't, don't you show this? As, Why don't you get to take people through that? Okay. Get on to, put it on the speaker view and... and uh, okay, here's what I mean. So here's just me doing nothing, right? But let's say I get coherent, I point and reach, I feel the balls of my feet, I set my weight over the balls of my feet, and I get coherent, and I feel my elbows, and all of a sudden I'm much more together. This is me just kind of apart. And this is me together. This is me kind of just thinking of something. And this is me together. Do you see the difference? When I have it all together, then it's like all of me works as one. So he's always talking about body, mind, spirit integration. This is where you start to feel it. So if you get into whatever posture in Tai Chi and you feel the posture and you feel it completely so that I'm feeling my feet and my hands and my knee wand and it's almost like I'm filling up my entire energetic structure with coherent energy. It's totally different and it feels really good and I start to feel very whole. And, and this is what I would like you guys to pay attention to when you're working on any of the little pieces 
that working on little pieces helps you to bring it into the whole so that you can sit down and you can be coherent or you can be in a posture and you can be coherent and connected and full. What was the thing we were doing? Boom, meet, fill, right? I don't know, and whoever here was, you were part of that. It's like, boom has set your three pillars, three pillars coherence, sun qua, central equilibrium. Meat is meat, whatever, the floor, the person, the air. And then fill, fill is expand into that shape. So whatever posture you're working on, if you get your three pillars in and then you expand into that shape, not only will you be more coherent, you'll be more whole and you'll be more integrated and you will be bigger energetically. Anyway, that was my point. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I noticed that last exercise. I don't, I, don't, I don't always get it that way, but when I connected the elbow and the claw, it really connected. Yeah. I felt yeah. the claw more than just doing the claw exercises. Just whoa, 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 whoa. That, that one time it clicked that my whoa, heel, my elbow, whoa, 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 whoa. and my claw. Excuse right. my dog. <laughs> As you get each of those pieces in, start connecting them all together. That's where you get the sense of real power and integration, wholeness, health. Great. Okay, kids, uh, it's closing time. Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you, Maria, for. We're running the show here and uh, see you soon. Okay. Love you all.